yo what is going on guys we're back here today with another competitive discussion video this time talking about pokemon home and how it was just released how it's gonna completely turn sword and shell competitive on its head OU is completely different now i think it's awesome personally we got dragon dance kieran black we got shell smash blasters we got all the goons in this tier now it's gonna be a blast but we also got stuff like soft boil clefable man roost high dragon these things are gonna be demons but yeah guys pokemon home just came out and so this guy tpp on smogon made this really nice thread uh showing which important moves were given to what ou pokemon and i figured that would be great would make for a good little video where i could basically just talk about what i think is going to be viable what i think is going to be unviable how i think the metagame is going to change because i mean we got a lot of like stuff from the past like defog is now on a bunch of pokemon like in the past hyper offense has been the best style in the sword and shield metagame um but now with all these defensive options you know defog is back uh the fat pokemon have access to better recovery moves than wish toxic is on everything so stuff like cloister you know it can't just set up on like every single mon you know they can click toxic or something like that which i thought was pretty interesting and um i mean yeah we'll just talk about it so before i get into that though i do gotta say that the agency merch is still live so go check that out it's been live for about a week now the embroidered pack uh i really appreciate the support so far you guys have been loving this shit and i'm really happy about that i think it's a fire design we got the embroidered pink on white hoodie too crisp too crisp although we got other colors obviously and then we got the blue on black don't sleep on that go check that out link will be in the description go cop the agency merch man don't be a kid go ahead just just be an agent but let's get back into this so i guess we can just start i mean this guy wrote a really nice thread honestly like he, he even like has the mons and everything so we can just go through them and i'll give my opinions uh what to expect all that good stuff i mean how could incorporate it on a team i'll probably show my ps team builder too i got that right here but yeah so clefable so clef is definitely going to be more of a nuisance now the fact that it has soft boiled it's going to give it a much easier time sitting on pokemon uh like dragapult that you know we're really messing with the metagame and it's going to be way better for dragapult just because going for wish is a really annoying move sometimes i mean wish is great because you're able to pass it to your opponent no doubt um i'm no, sorry not to your opponent your teammates but soft build is way better for not losing momentum i mean if you have to wish you might have to protect the next turn and i have seen it a lot of times in a battle where somebody will have clefable out and uh they'll switch into hydreigon and hydreigon will flash cannon and then they'll go for wish and hydreigon will nasty plot on the wish or Hydreigon will do this uh, on like Nasty Plot again on the Protect, and you could even lose the 1v1. With Softball, that's not possible. Because um, you just get back up the full HP. You don't have to spend two times attempting to heal and getting outplayed, uh, which I think is really, really nice. This guy also said that got uh, moves such as uh, Knock Off, Thunder Wave, Trick, and Teleport. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. I mean, Knock Off is kind of cool, I guess. It's like whatever. I mean,. Yeah, I don't know. Toxic is pretty cool. Toxic Clef has always been annoying Pokemon. It's able to chip stuff like Rotom Heat. Um, but, yeah. That's interesting. So, yeah. Clef is very, very good. I mean, I'm going to keep going through. Mew. Mew also got soft boiled. Uh, that's going to be really nice, in my opinion. I think Mew really benefited uh, from this because it got a ton of its support moves back. Like, literally. Look at, like, what Pokemon won harder here than Mew. It finally got real recovery back. It has Defog as well, which I think is going to be pretty strong um knock off ultimate support option and i guess toxic but i wouldn't run toxic on Mew personally but it's just nice that this thing got access to like three of its like most used moves in gen 7 roost defog and knockoff it can now play the support set a lot more uh precisely which i think is really good um uh, I, I mean even then i don't know if i'd even use Mew, just because there's so many ghost types in the metagame but knockoff to some degree can circumvent that so that's pretty interesting toby kiss yeah this guy got soft build and defog um and roost i mean that's pretty fire honestly with the heavy duty boots this thing is going to be such a threat i'm happy i got roost this thing needed roost back it's going to be a real problem now without consistent recovery because you could have ran morning sun <coughs> or wish but that's very bad so i mean this is like the very effective way to recover which i'm really into oh hydreigon so hydreigon getting roost is absolutely insane that's absolutely insane um i've been waiting for this for a while like because i knew it was going to get roost from pokemon home got released i really think this is going to be like one of the most broken mons introduced because if we look to my trusty team builder we look for a hydreigon team well, this one's specs i mean that one's scarf but which one is where are my nasty plot hydreigons i have teams with it. hold on here we go so if you look at a set like this what could stop me oh whoops hold on what could stop oh shit my song goes there what could stop me from putting roost over flamethrower you know what i mean because all you need is dark post and muscle past the steel types uh, and uh flash cannon is able to just kill sylveon clefable you know whatever the case 
And you don't really need flamethrower coverage at that point. Uh, another thing is, people used to use Mandibus as the primary check to Hydreigon. That doesn't work anymore because I just roost up. Hydreigon has excellent bulk. Absolutely excellent bulk. Um, so I think this thing will definitely be a big threat. Even 3 attack roost will be very, very good. Very, very good. Um, but even that, but that might actually uh, get some competition from the Dragapult. Either way, though, Hydreigon is really cool with Roost. I'm going to really like that. I mean, it has great defenses. 92, 90, 90, a good typing, levitate. It's going to get a lot of opportunities to uh, go for that anyway. But yeah, uh, one thing I did notice, though, is that even though Hydreigon does get Roost, I mean, it gets Defog, but I don't think that's going to be that great. But the fact that it gets Roost is big. Um, but I didn't think it was going to be... I mean, I thought it was going to be a little bit more manageable, though, because as you can see, they did release new Pokemon, right? Like, we got Keldeo, Tarak, um, Zero Aura, uh, Primarina. Like, we got stuff that can pose a threat. So I thought that was pretty nice, that even though they gave it Roost, the Pokemon they released can sort of deal with it. So that was pretty nice. They gave Defog to a bunch of stuff. The Rotoms all got Defog again, which I think is cool. Um, I mean, two of them still lose to Seismitoad. So it's like whatever. However, they did get toxic, which I think is great. I'm happy that stuff got toxic because stuff like Seismitoad just sitting around forever and being the only mon that got toxic in the metagame so far has been very annoying. Very annoying. That was like the only defensive mon that had toxic. You'd always have to sack your Seismitoad to toxic the other one. Um, but I can see Rotom Heat being a huge threat with access to toxic for sure. I'll pass it on Seismitoad. Pass it on like just anything. That, that seems like a big threat. <coughs> um... I mean, otherwise, I mean, Rotom Wash going for Defog is good. I mean, they're all good Defoggers. Like, in a nutshell, even if they do lose to Seismitoad, you can get around that. Too bad they didn't get Pain Split back, did they? Monster got Knock Off. Okay, Weavile getting Knock Off is fire. Super fire. Knock Off is so powerful compared to Weak Throat Chop. Dude, my Bisharp team becomes so much more powerful, too, now that Knock Off is up. Yeah, I mean, the Dark types really benefit from that, no doubt about it. Um... Yeah, I think Beefile can rise up again. I mean, I think it's already a good mon, the SD set, but I think Bandit now has a, uh, has like a place in the metagame. Yeah, Bandit definitely has a place in the metagame now that uh, Knockoff is here because it's impossible to switch into that. Clefs are even running a specially defensive set, so Knockoff is still going to toast those. And then Bishop with Knockoff is like just amazing, amazing, because now you're actually able to kill Corvin, like you're able to kill Seismitoad with your plus two Knockoff. Throat Chop could not finish them off. So I think Bisharp is absolutely going to rise. Um, a lot of psychic types, a lot of ghost types in this metagame. It does have competition from Hydreigon, but Bisharp is really, really good. Mamoswan getting knockoff. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. Um, it, it, I don't think it changes too much. Uh, most of the mons that get hit by knockoff are like ghost types like Gengar and Dragapult, which get obliterated anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really think it needs it that much. It's cool, though. Uh, Kong getting knockoff is absolutely major. Absolutely major. Major. Because now Pokemon like Dragapult are not able to switch in and live one Earthquake. They just die. It's just a better move to have on Guts all around. You're able to hit the Aegislash as well. Uh, Air Balloon Aegislash does not wall you anymore, which is great. Knockoff is just nice coverage, man. I think they're all going to start running knockoff. It's probably going to be like fighting move, knockoff. Um, facade. I don't know. Maybe mock punch last or uh, thunder punch. I don't know. But either way, yeah, I think knockoff is going to be really good on this. Um, and in, in general, knockoff is such a great move because of the utility it, it provides. Even if you get the switch, the thing with knockoff is, even if you go for knockoff and they switch out to something else, you still took its item. So even if they go to something like mandibus, you still took its like heavy duty boots. That's why knockoff is so good. So I mean. Regardless, I think that knockoff is gonna now be a staple on Conkelder's move set, and that's it. Really, it really pimped it up. Um, okay, uh, Toad and Reuniclus got it. Whatever, Diggersby got it. Whatever, Pex. Yeah, that's like just a little support. And then everything I got toxic. I mean, like, yeah, these guys getting toxic just allows them to threaten setup sweepers better. I mean, there's a reason HO was considered the best uh, placed on the metagame. Literally, nothing at toxic, nothing could stop these things from setting up. Um, and we're at a point in the metagame where mons are bulky enough to live one hit. But now if, like, everything has toxic, like Toxic Hippo, for example, yeah, try setting up with all your dumb stuff now. Like, it's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. Um, which I think is good, honestly. So, yeah, I think the toxic, the big, big enemy, now that toxic is here, is Durant, man. Durant. I'm sorry, but why did I say Durant? I was thinking of Aegislash, but I said Durant, bro. Nobody's running Toxic Durant. I don't know why I said that. I just destroyed my video with that. Toxic Aegislash. So this was a huge menace back in Gen 6, Gen 7 when it was banned, Subtoxic. So Subtoxic Aegislash set is Substitute, Toxic, King Shield, Shadow Ball. 
with max HP and then whatever you can run special defense, you can run special attack, defense, whatever you want. But basically this set gets up a substitute, then a king shows to drop the opponent's attack, toxic to out, like just wear out the opponent. And in general, this is a very, very difficult mod to deal with long term in any game. It's natural bulk lets it get up a sub on most like fairy types and just in general it can 1v1 a lot of things with access to toxic and king shield and then of course shadow ball is still very very strong especially in this metagame where ghost resists are at an all-time low um and it's coming off such high special attack king shield did obviously take the nerf where it's only minus one attack instead of minus two attack so that you know might change things up a little bit but i think in a metagame right now with so much wish support and stuff like that sub toxic Aegis slash could end up being one of the biggest threats in the metagame period i mean Aegis slash is already one of the best pokemon in the game easily easily the spec set is so good it's crazy that we have stopped using king shield as much um but i do think sub toxic king shield will make a return there are still things that can deal with it pex for example if it has haze to haze off the special defense drops can sort of deal with it uh defensively um but in general it's very very good at uh just whittling down its counters such as rotom heat seismitoad all that stuff and that's one of the biggest threats so i'm really looking forward to seeing how sub toxic Aegis slash ends up affecting the metagame and now we're where we really want to be, the new Pokemon. Yes. Yes. So let's just start it up, bro. Let's start it up, bro. Venusaur. So I think this guy wrote with some new moves because I'm not even going to know. Um, Venusaur, yes. Despite losing HP Fire, Venusaur still has access to Weather Ball and looks to be a scary threat under the sun. Kumo'o may be able to deal with it thanks to its typing and bulletproof, but it likely won't be able to deal significant damage back unless it offs run something like Flamethrower. That is very true because Kumo'o right now is uh, just running Body Press, which Venusaur obviously resists. I think the fact that it has Weather Ball is really, really cool. I'm probably going to change my Rose Raid team up and put uh, Venusaur on there just because obviously that team has Torkoal. Um, so Weather Ball would be Fire Move. Yeah, I mean, Venusaur is pretty cool. I think on Sun, it has a lot of potential. Um... A growth set with like solar beam sludge bomb weather ball would probably just sweep the meta or sleep powder three attack like i had in rose raid i mean it's an it's an interesting tech um but yeah if you're running sun i'm pretty sure this thing like destroys the meta just looking at it like i don't see a lot of stuff and i always run venusaur sun in gen 7 um and i'm sure it can translate well here weather ball is even better because you get to destroy stuff like corviknight like absolutely butcher them ferrothorn too which is pretty nice uh i mean yeah i think this thing has the potential to be a big threat there's not a lot of ice shard priority right now besides weavile and mammoth swine and even those two don't have insane usage i guess cloister but you can just get drain all that back venusaur has the natural defense plus two sludge bomb is able to kill all the rotoms it's able to kill hydreigon yeah that's not bad you, you gotta you just gotta yeah i think venusaur has pretty good odds actually it's able to wall stuff like clefable if no t-wave or flamethrower yeah i like uh i like venusaur's odds in this current metagame Blastoise with the Shell Smash, bro. It's finally time. It's finally time. Unfortunately, he's not Mega, which is sad, bro, which is sad. But I think this is going to be fire. This guy's talking about using it on Rain. That was actually the first thing I thought of because then you're able to run Rain Dish plus Life Orb. And then you're also able to run Hydro Pump in the Rain plus two Life Orb. Bro, this thing is going to be a threat. Now, we got to understand that there's still stuff like Jellicent, Melodic, and Toxapex in the metagame, which literally still wall Shell Smash Blastoise even at plus two. So we gotta run a mix set with like Earthquake or Dark Pulse or something. Even then, I'm still like in my head trying to figure out ways to take like those threats on because I don't see how this thing is gonna defeat Bulky Waters. However, if you play a team and uh, what's it called, you don't, I mean, they don't have a strong Bulky Water or they have something like Seismitoad, which you can definitely get past. If they have Pex, Melodic, or uh, What's it called? What was the other one I said? Whatever. Pex, if they have Pex or Melodic for the most part, it's going to be very hard to break through. Um, but I mean, if you're playing an offensive team, I bet you could smoke most of these teams. Like, just looking at this. Um, just looking at this. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, looking at a lot of these teams, I feel like Shell Smash Blastoise has the potential to set up on, like, Corviknight and, like, sweep all these teams. Like, literally. I mean, I use quite a bit of Seismitoad, which is a consistent check, but for the most part, uh, Blastoise can really put in some work, especially on a rain build, I think it would be really, really powerful. It's just about time this manga got Shell Smash. Like, we've been waiting for so long. For so long, we've been waiting for this thing to get Shell Smash. So I've been waiting since Black and White 1, when I saw what Shell Smash Cloister could do back in 2012, and then I was like, wait, why doesn't Blastoise have it, bro? They robbed my boy. 
Well, finally, Shell Smash is here. So, what does this guy think? Um, Ice resists aren't terribly common outside of Tox Packs, Steel types and Fire types. So, Blast Toys. So, what he's talking about using Ice Beam? What does Ice Beam even hit? I mean, it just hits like a couple of these guys harder. Um, like Hydreigon. But I still think plus two rain in the like Hydro Pump, Life Orb. That's what you need to be doing. Blast Toys does have pretty mediocre stats uh, offensively, but defensively, it's good. I mean,. We'll see. This would be more of a gimmick than anything, I think. But I do think under rain, it will have the potential. Especially with the rain dish. And Blastoise is bulky, so we'll see. Okay, Raichu. I don't know what tools they gave Raichu. If they even gave Raichu any tools. I mean, yeah, dude. I don't I don't think that thing is really going to be one to shake up the meta. Um, this thing's worse than like Heliolisk. If we're going to compare it to an electric type anyway. And Zero Aura also got released. So there's absolutely no reason for this thing to pop off. It doesn't have any access to like any new moves either. It's just a, it's just an interesting mon, Raichu. But I'm just gonna ignore it because it's like definitely not, it's definitely not popping. Alolan Nine Tails. This is pretty interesting, I guess. Um, ice types in general have been very very powerful in the current meta thanks to heavy duty boots and stuff like that. I can see Alolan Nine Tails being great as well. It's pretty fast. Um, it's able to threaten stuff like Hydreigon, you know, Rotom Wash, Rotom Cut, Togekiss. Uh, Seismitoe with freeze dry, and it does have access to screens, which could be really nice. I've seen a lot of people running Vanillax screens, even though Vanillax is garbage. I mean, it's not like, uh, it's not like Nine Tails is like that much. No, Nine Tails is worse than Vanilla, honestly. At least Vanilla Ice Cream is strong. Nine Tails, is, God, like so weak. But either way, a little like Nine Tails with the Aurora Veil will be up there. The speed is very, very high, um, so it is bound to get up the Aurora Veil before it goes down. So, I don't know. That could be interesting. The true Alolan. Yeah, I don't really see this thing uh, having too much of a place in the metagame. It's not like I had one in Gen 7. Without the ability to trap, it's just going to get trapped by its oh, like little brother or whatever. So yeah, I don't really see the point of a Lowland Duck Trio. I don't think that thing is going to end up really changing the meta too much. But yeah, same with Persian. Same with Rapidash. Weezing. Weezing has been completely, absolutely, utterly outclassed by uh the goat hold on strange theme so there's like no reason to run regular wheezing and i know i know i sound like i'm switching up man but regular wheezing there's no reason to run him over uh wheezy out of here bro galarian wheezing is so good on um, like both a fizz def and a spit def set so it's like there's no point there's no point but let's keep going um corsola whatever celebi that's pretty cool i mean Celebi was bad in Gen 7 OU. It was bad in Gen 6 OU as well. I, I think it's even bad in Gen 5 OU. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, I don't know how this thing is going to really affect the metagame. I feel like it's not going to. I mean, there's so many ghost types. This thing is what? It has, like, does it still have access to all its own moves? Nasty Plot, Earth Power, all that stuff. But it doesn't, like, it's, how is it going to break a lot of these mods? It's going to die to Hydreigon unless it runs Dazzling Gleam. But if it runs Dazzling Gleam, that's missing out on another coverage move. It doesn't have access to HP Fire, so Ferrothorn is going to wall it every single day. Um, you have to run Earth Power, you have to run Giga Drain, and then you have to choose between Dazzling Gleam to hit Hydreigon, Psychic to hit the Rotom uh, Cut and Rotom Heat, and then, like, I don't know, it's just... There's not enough uh, moves for Celebi here. I don't think Celebi. I think Celebi is very uh, unnecessary in terms of an offensive slot. If you're running some nasty plot thing, you just run. You should just run something else like Hydreigon that's actually strong, or something that hits hard off the bat too. Like Dragapult has the same special attack, but it's definitely gonna put in more work than Celebi because it has better moves and it's just able to get off hits easier. Not to mention Celebi gets absolutely obliterated by Corviknight, like destroyed every single set, blown away by Corviknight. Yeah, I think Celebi really is not going to be good. It's kind of sad because this thing is a legendary. Um, and this thing used to be really good like <laughs> 10 years ago. But this thing has really fallen off. Grass typing is very hard to justify these days unless you have an amazing secondary typing like Ferrothorn. Um, you're extremely offensive like Tapu Bulu used to be or Venusaur could be. Rose Raid, for example. Or your Tangrowth, which is like the GOAT. But Celebi, really, typing doesn't do any favors. Stats are very middling. You can run Thunder Wave, but like... I don't know why you would. It just doesn't seem necessary to run, and it's definitely going to be inferior to other grass types. That's how it's that's how it's felt using Celebi for a long time. Okay, Lanoon. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is a meme mon. Uh, I mean, I had fun with it. I mean, it's not even bad though. But look at the metagame. All you need is extreme speed and stomping tantrum. 
and uh, you know it's not bad. I mean, if you went to Rhyperior, you're gonna be sad, or Hippowdon. But for the most part, all the other guys get smoked. The problem is, every single mod is a ghost type nowadays. So yeah, I mean, with Gengar, Dragapult being on every team, gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Dragapult with this 40% usage, you gotta be careful. So yeah, Lineman is questionable. Jirachi, hmm. This is interesting. This is interesting. Let's see, Jirachi. I mean, Jirachi is able to check Clef. It's able to pass wishes, which is not bad. There are still a lot of ghost types like we were talking about, so that's annoying. Um, it does also lose to a lot of defensive Pokemon like Ferrothorn, and Seismitoad, Pex. But I mean, it can pass Wish. But there's not. But the thing is, there's not stuff like Tapu Lele in the metagame to where using Jirachi is a must. You know, last gen we had stuff like Magearna, Tapu Lele, incredible broken fairy types. We don't have that anymore. Like, where are offensive fairies here? Like, people just run defensive fairies in this metagame. So Jirachi's utility has sort of gone down, not to mention the premier dragon types, destroy it, being Dragapult and Hydreigon. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's not it's not that good. It checks Clef, but I mean, you can toss out Body Slam Para and stuff like that, but all around, I don't know why you'd run this over Wish Pass Clef if you really wanted to run Wish Pass. The special attackers are low. I don't want this thing to become setup bait for so many mons, really. Yeah, this one's like, whatever. I don't know. Uh, what's it called? Darmanitan. He he Daruma. Darmanitan OG form. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, this thing is like whatever. It's just a nuke. You could always run this mod and get away with getting at least 1 or 1 1.5 kills. Just because Bandit is that broken. Even stuff like Seismito can't switch into well. Pex is going to get smashed too. I mean, yeah, I would just run Bandit or Scarf. Same as you always run. Flare Bliss. Just hit everything as much as you can and then just sack it. Yeah, it's a fun mon, man. It's it's always it's just your, like your type of nuke, <laughs> Darmanitan, Stunfisk, whatever, man. This mon it lets me down a lot. No comment. Cobalion. Oh, uh, I mean it doesn't beat a lot, right? Like it's fast. It beats Weavile, which I mean hasn't really picked up yet. It loses to everything else. Like it's trapped. Yeah, Cobalion was garbage before. It's garbage now. All right, Terak. Finally, like a mon that could be viable, but probably just, like whatever. Nah, Terak's gonna be good. Terrak's gonna be good. I think Bandit is gonna be a big threat. Um, even with the uh, the ghosts that are out, or SD has potential to be a big threat too. The coverage is pretty nice this meta game. I think there's not a lot of faster mons either. Like for the most part, Terrak is really quick. Let me see. That guy probably said. Um, let me see what this guy. Let me see what he said for Cobalion. Cobalion really didn't gain much except for Megahorn Air Slash. It's unable to break through stuff. It's less Stealth Rock and Volt Switch, so you could do utility. Even then, I would never run Stealth Rock Cobalion. That seems like a gigantic waste of time. Terrak. Uh, it has access to Earthquake, and the best switch is Terrak. I look to be physically defensive. Komo'o, Hippowdon, and Bulky Water is not including Tox Specs. Swords Dance or Choice Band sets with 108 speed. Looks pretty scary on paper. Mega Horn and Air Slash doesn't need either of those. But yeah, I do think that SD and Bandit have potential. We're in a metagame now where 108 is fast again. Last generation, if you didn't have 130 speed, you were considered slow because of the Ash Grand break, the breakout, the destruction. But with no more Ash Grand, Mega Alakazam, all those broken kids, Terak is uh, one of the fastest mods in the metagame. I think that's going to definitely pay off for it. I'm going to have to run SD and Bandit soon. That's going to be very interesting. Um, Verizion. Yeah, dude, I don't know. Solar Blade as well. It does not it does not get Weather Ball with plus two. Close combat with Life Orb. Can one hit KO, especially defensive Corbinite with Stealth Rock. Um Yeah, dude, I ain't gonna lie. I think this thing is gonna be bad. Just because I remember how horrible it was in Gen 7, Gen 6, and even Gen 5, it's quite bad too. Um It can never beat Aegis Slash. It can't it can't beat like anything. It can't beat Dragapult, like it's it's what do i look like using a mon with base 90 attack like what it's just it's just i don't know i mean there's no tang growth and stuff now so like yeah that is cool but what this guy can't one hit ko a single mon like it doesn't matter it loses to all defensive mons too all these three beat it every fairy beats it it's like it's, it's just like it's an embarrassing mon embarrassingly weak Cure him normal. This guy got freeze dry. I think that's it, right? Freeze dry. Yeah, I mean, that's whatever. I don't know why you use freeze dry when you can just run Draco. This thing's like whatever. Cure him black. Finally, we're here. We have Dragon Dance now. This shit is going to be epic. 
this is going to be absolutely incredible so they gave Kieran Black access to Dragon Dance. This guy said that the physical move pool is still lacking, but there's no ice resistance in the metagame. There's a reason my three Cloisters team took off. Weavile and Clo oh, Cloisters already amazing, and it's better than Weavile. Cloisters is insane. There are not a lot of sturdy ice resists, and that's why Weavile works too. Really not a lot of sturdy ice resists outside of Rotom Heat. So you can now run Dragon Dance on this guy and run Icicle Spear or Freeze Shock. But Freeze Shock with the Power Herb seems really good, because at plus one, what's eating that up? It's basically like having a Z move. Not to mention Kieran Black has options of Fusion Bolt and Dragon Claw or Outrage too. I really think this thing is going to be insane. And this guy does bring up the fact that Kieran Black has such a high natural def uh, like defenses and insane HP stat that it's able to basically get up two Dragon Dances. So this is going to be a really big threat, I think. Um, it also has access to Iron Head if it wants to hit Clef harder. Yeah, I mean, in special options, it says Freeze Dry, Earth Power, Weather Ball, Flash, Cannon, Draco. I feel like those are all unnecessary. I think DD is definitely going to be a threat. I mean, just looking at the the tier, like say you Dragon Dance on like a Rotom or something, or just like you can you can DD on most guys and sub DD, sub DD. Oh my God, that is going to be the big big menace. Y'all aren't ready. Y'all are absolutely not ready for sub DD because I know every mon in the, under the sun is going to run Toxic, thinking that that's how they're going to deal with this thing. But then it's just going to DD up and then Dragon Claw and Iron Head and just sweep your team or Fusion Ball or whatever. Yeah, Dragon Dance. Kieran Black is going to be the biggest threat. I'm really excited for that. Um, I'm really excited. I think it could even be banned. It's going to be so good. I'm really excited, though. I think every team is going to need, like, Scarf Dragapult and Scarf Fire Dragon. But, yeah, Kieran Black back in the mix is Heat. Only, like, effective Steel type that can deal with it is, like, Ferrothorn and, like, not really. Because plus one's still going to sauce that thing up. All right, Keldeo. If you don't play Pex, Keld's always uh, stands a chance at being decent. It's quite fast as well. Um, this is good bulk. What's this guy say? Kill those X air slash now, but it did lose hidden power. True. Speed tier 108 with King Guard, Dog Trio, Cinderace, and Dragapult being the only ones faster than it. Cool. And three of these lose to it, so that's nice. Okay, Jealous and Gastron do expect, and maybe Clefable Choice Spec Skull does 45% at most, he's saying. Damn. So I guess it looks like it's gonna have the problems it had last generation. It's just hard to sweep with Clef, but I mean, I mean Keldeo. But if I look at my teams, I mean they're not that good versus Keld. I mean they're like they're like okay, like a team, a team like this could have problems with Keldeo maybe. But I even have like Water Absorb and I have Wish Pass. I don't know. It's just tough. Water Fighting ain't the same, bro. Water Fighting ain't the same. When every team has a physically, def I mean when every team has just like a very defensive Water type, and every team also has a Fairy type to pass Wish to it. How does Keldeo break that? It can't beat the fairy type without a water move, and it can't beat the seismic without a fighting move. And if it's Calm Mind, the fairy type's still gonna beat it, and seismic's still gonna beat it. So, Keldeo always just gets a really troublesome hand every gen after gen 5, I mean after gen 6, so we'll see. Decidueye. Did it get anything? What did this guy say? He gained Solar Blade, Hex, and a Hurricane. Mandibuzz and Corviknight in theory can handle this, especially Mandibuzz, but Corviknight will either need Bulk Up or Brave Bird to turn Decidueye true. Plus two spirit shackle composer threat. That's true. This thing, I mean, ghost ty ghost typing has always been great offensively. Uh, plus two spirit shackle definitely could be a threat. Uh, what did this guy say? Decidueye like Aegislash Slash can prevent Dragapult from revenge killing it thanks to prime already options and Shadow Sneaker Sucker Punch. And now it's next to Hex, uh, but it's definitely it's definitely outclassed. Especially, I mean, this is definitely kind of like a fun pick. It's definitely not the most effective, but I could see a Spirit Shackle set putting in some type of work. And it does have priority to do with Dragon Pulse. So that is interesting. Incineroar gained a lot of crazy stuff. I think this is cool. Incineroar gained Close Combat, Heat Crash, Parting Shot, Reversal, Endurance Assurance. I think Close Combat is the coolest one. Um, but yeah, I don't think Incineroar is going to be that big in OU. It's walled by most Mons. Mandibuzz walls it straight up. It powered on the wallet forever. Komoo, who everybody and their mom uses, completely walls it. Can't break any water types for the most part. I think in lower tiers it'll be great. With Swords Dance, uh, the ability to run heavy duty boots. This thing is going to be really, really good uh, with some Wish Pass support. And heavy duty boots, man. That's, that's the item of the year. It's the item of the year, dude. That's going to really pay off. Damn, damn. This is going to be cool. This is going to be cool for sure. Incineroar, we'll see in VGC too when it tears it up with heavy duty boots and all that stuff. Primarina is in here. Primarina can finally set up thanks to having access to Calm Mind now. It also got Draining Kiss and Stored Power, which may turn it into a decent sweeper. 
Psychic stored power can get past Toxic Specs, but is unable to get past Ferrothorn, which is unfortunate as the number of defensive grass types is down to just Ferrothorn now. Toxic on various mons such as Gastron may also prevent Primarina from setting up as freely as it wants to. It's interesting that they gave it Calm Mind. Um, yeah, I mean, it'll be cool, I guess. Like, I'm just looking at the, the meta, and it, it, it has potential. It does lose to Pex. I think Specs is the one. You can't beat Ferrothorn, but you can literally beat everything else. You run Specs Psychic too to just nuke Pex, because all the Pex are uh, physically defensive these days, because they all want to check Dracovish. So I do think that uh, Specs does have some potential. Just clicking Moonblast, looks like most of the metagame is very ill prepared to switch in. I mean, this obviously isn't the whole U tier. There's no Ferrothorn listed here. This is just the new guys. But, um,. I don't know, let's look through these teams a little bit. I mean, most of these guys can't really switch into Specs Moonblast. I mean, and you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be scared to switch in your Corviknight or Rotom, the possibility of a hydro pump. Yeah, I mean look at this team. This hit one top Trosco team probably gets blown away by Specs Primarina. They just moonblast every single time. It comes in on so many guys for free. It's really nice that Primarina blows up Hydreigon. Hydreigon cannot touch Primarina, which I think is great, unless it has like Belch or something like that. So that's pretty cool. Um I like that. Zero Aura. So that's now the fastest Mon in the metagame, I believe. And faster than Dragapult, right? If you have something naturally faster than Dragapult, great. I mean, it's probably, this is like this is going to be something cool. The main new coverage for Zero Aura is Play Rough. Plasma Fist, Play Rough, Close Combat, Knock Off, Fire Punch, Grass Knot. No HP Ice, but of course, Lando and Gliscor in here. So what is this guy uh, saying? Looks pretty good in my book. Grass not a toxic and ground types. You definitely do you do need to run grass not. Um, because you have to hit Seismitoad and Hippo. I mean Hippo's not even that common, but Seismitoad's on every team, so you're gonna wanna run Grass Knot. Uh I mentioned knockoff because it's a really good move in general. Knockoffs are removed, leftovers are heavy duty boots. It does hit Rotom Heat pretty nice. You can even run a toxic set. I know some dude ran a subset in the past. But yeah, this thing looks pretty good now that it's naturally faster than Dragapult. I can see this thing putting on some good damage for the metagame with CC, uh, Plasma Fist, Grass Knot, and then, yeah, whatever last move you want. It's definitely not a bad option. Yeah, I mean, the set I'll probably run is... Why does he have Play Rough? Do you need Play Rough? Actually, I think Play Rough is good. It just hits like a lot of stuff super effectively. Hit Conk and stuff like that. And then Mel Metal, YNW Mel Metal. I'm so happy this boss is finally in the tier. Yeah, boy. I'm really happy this boss is finally in the tier. This thing's pretty cool. Mel Metal's finally available for us to use in OU. It boasts incredible bulk. 135 HP, 143 defense, 143 attack stat. Nuts. Double Iron Bash is disgustingly strong. 30% to flinch with each one. And the attack goes from 120 to 144 thanks to Iron Fist. It's such a strong mod. The odds of uh, double Iron Bash flinching are low because the thing's speed is trash, but it does have access to Thunder Wave. So, yeah, this is like what Registeel was supposed to be, literally, with sub Thunder Wave and flinching stuff down. This is nuts. Choice Band, you do 36 to 43 to max defense Toxapex, 73 to 86 to max defense Kamo, and 64 to 75 to Hippo. That's actually crazy. And it's faster than Pex, so you're gonna flinch it because you have 30% chance on both hits. Dude, this is epic. I cannot wait to use this in SPL. Yeah, Melmetal is incredible. It's very, very bulky. Um, you can run Assault Vest, this guy's saying. Assault Vest could be interesting, but I'd rather just run Bandit for the most part. I'm really excited for this. Um, yeah, Melmetal, it's about time they finally got this thing in the metagame, man. Like, this thing is the one. Let's see. Sub I want to just see what some other ideas people have so we can go through my teams and see. Combine Clef already had was already there, but Soft Bow is definitely gonna be good. Um, heavy duty boots on the Kyrams. I didn't think about that. I think heavy duty boots on Kyram normal has a ton of potential with sub roost or just roost three attack or whatever the case. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think about heavy duty boots on Kyram. That's a good call. Combine Clef is Soft Bow is definitely gonna be more annoying. And yeah, he called the sub toxic Age Slash. Um. There should be a Lowland Duck Trio, right? Okay. So this guy thinks about Terrakion. The speed decreep, yes. Yeah, so we did talk about that. The fact that speed has gone down as a whole. Uh, stuff like Dragapult is the premier speed. Well, I guess um, Zero Aura now. 
But yeah, choice sets are going to be really good. It does have access to Stealth Rock. I didn't think about that either. An offensive Stealth Rocker besides Extra Drill is quite cool. Um, and it also deals with Extra Drill. Well, actually, it doesn't deal with Extra Drill because Extra Drill just rapid spins if it's Sash and then beats you the next turn. You can run a Quick Attack, though. Um, Toxic is a good check. Yeah, because they're all Fizz Def now. Corviknight can get blown up um, pretty easily. It's going to be cool that Terag is going to be OU again. Because I know it was like BL or something last generation. Maybe it was UU. Primarina's back. Yup, offensive check to Hydreigon. That is extremely massive. Because Flash Cannon's neutral. Yup. This is going to be really big. It's also going to take advantage of Komo'o, Crawdon, Mandibuzz, Dragapult, Non-Facade, Conkeldur. Specs, Hydro Pump can 2 HKO, even Max with F-Club. That is a great post. Yeah, so Primarina, like we said, it is going to be able to offensively check. Hydra Gun, which is huge, because all the other fairy types lose to it, so that's cool. Oh, bet. Let's look at this. Oh, bet. Let's look at this real quick. So, this thing got everything in the book. Pretty good. A rank. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, okay. Toxic. Oh, uh, anything good here? Tailwind support, defog, a little some Roar Toxic. Nothing too good. Um, I mean, yeah, these are all pretty like crazy options for the most part. Like a lot of these are unnecessary. Infestation quag. I mean, not quag. Infestation gastro. I mean, this is. I called it quag. Then I called it gastro. And but it's actually seismitoad. You can't make this up. I'm so dumb. Infestation can be cool on seismitoad because you can trap other water types. So that's something to think about. Uh, toxic on hippos major. Toxic on. Oh wait, they got pain split back. Oh snap. Rotom's getting pain split back is huge. Hold up. That's very fire. All Rotom's getting pain split back is extremely good. They're way better now. Especially Rotom Heat with the boots and access to pain split. Oh, that boy's never dying. I'm very happy Rotom's got back pain split. I didn't know. I didn't know. Excellent. Excellent. That's going to be really good def uh, defensively. Let's see what else. Um, still got anything good. This guy got quite a bit. Heal Bell is cool. We talked about all the other stuff though. Cloyster, nothing worth. No, Tyranitar got. Mm. It doesn't look like anything you want to run really. This guy got knockoff, which is good enough. Crawdon didn't really need anything else. Nothing else could have really made it better. Gastron got toxic and infestation, which is cool. This thing, no. Endeavor Mammoth Swine is interesting. Maybe Sash could make a move, but doubt it. Reuniclus didn't get much of value either. Rotom Wash getting paint split back, of course. This guy got some crazy moves, but it's not going to matter. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, it looks like a lot of... Oh, okay, Mew got, like, everything under the sun. Obviously, it's Mew. I mean, it got, like, Sucker Punch and stuff, so, I mean, like, whatever. Yeah, I'm just going to skip past this. Let's go back down. But yeah, the Rotom's getting paint split's actually epic. Let's see. This guy made this nice meme. Scarf I think Scarf Jirachi is going to be very bad. Um in the Aegis Slash meta. And I don't know. It is it is true that it just check it checks cloister, but like what if you shell smash as you go to your Jirachi, then you don't flinch them, then they shell smash again, and then you lose. So it's not really a check like that guy was saying, but yeah, I don't really see Jirachi's potential. Maybe I'll change my mind. So this guy's talking about AV. Let's take on Clef and stuff like that. All right, cool. Some images. Hydreigon's weakness of lacking sustainability was fairly a big bane of it. Absolutely, I agree. Roost makes this thing so demonic. I do think it was going to be S rank too. The fact that they brought back some of the Musketeers like Terak and Keldeo to check Hydreigon was a good move by them. But yeah, Hydreigon is going to be epic now. Roost is great. It's able to destroy all these defensive mons that prayed that it would just chip itself with life orbs, such as Rotom and Mandibus. Age of got Toxic back. Yes, sir. Subtoxic will be the, the GOAT. Melodic got Toxic back, too. Okay. It's interesting. And it has re reliable recovery. Yeah, this guy said Age is the biggest winner. I agree. This guy said, yeah, nah. But I think Kyurem is going to be bad. I don't think even Freeze is that good. But yeah, this thing will be busted. Three KOs rolled him heat with double iron bash. That's a four time resist. 
incredible. Thunder Punch for these three. Talk spec slow bro Corvette Knight, which is good. I didn't even know Slowbro was in the meta. Even Doug Trio can't beat this because you just double bash it and it's gonna get hit twice. Just cover and I can take a plus dude, but can take test two This will be cool. Yeah, I don't know about this. Still walled by Pex. Zero or is a threat, y'all. Well, yeah, what if this what if they gave this one? <laughs> what if they gave what if this one got the tactics too? <laughs> what if they gave this one uh Gorilla Tactics too? It would have been a wrap. Yeah, and I did it's gonna be very hard for this guy to uh to break past water types, I agree. I mean for the most part. Alright, let me let me see this guy's defense for Kobalion. Great speed tier, Hydreigon and Drill. You can check those, both of those can Oko it, so I don't know. I do think you have to run some type of Stealth Rock support set, so I will take his word for it. You definitely do need to run some Stealth Rock shit. You don't want to run some speed. Spe he is right that it does beat Cloyster. You can just Volt Switch on Cloyster. Um, damn, he said Weavile especially would give you six justified boosts if it makes the mistake of attacking you. So everyone's already accepted that beat up is the new tech. Great. The agency does it again. Necrozma. I didn't even know this kid was back. What? Oh, oh, oh. Interesting. Interesting. Necrozma's in here. Finally, man. Yeah, show me some cool modes. It has Dragon Dance? <laughs> what? What? That's whack. I mean, I like Necrozma. It has a high special attack stat. I think it could be. I think it could be interesting. I know where Clef's back. That'll help stall a little bit, but not really. Yeah, this thing will be a good defogger, probably. Beats like everything. Nasty plot plus simple now gives you a respectable plus four. That's pretty cool. This thing gets defogged now. Doesn't seem necessary. Oh, hi, uh, Charizard gets Roost with heavy duty boots. That's actually a big one. No, no, this guy's right. Roost is cool. Teleporting dog. <laughs> teleporting talk <laughs> why did they give teleport to this I think the Charizard thing is pretty interesting under sun with roost threat what else basically talked about all this already Let's see. Y'all are sleeping on Teleport Clefay, but I think defensive sets will benefit greatly from immediately swinging momentum in your favor. I don't think it's that good. I mean, how can I say yet? But I don't like the idea of slow U-turn, like slow momentum. It just, you're going to take a big hit and then your Clef's not going to be able to support. This is fire. Eject pack nine tails plus Duck Joe to snipe packs and Venusaur. This type of core will be demonic. I do think Torkoal is forever better than nine tails though. Um... Roost sub freeze dry earth power sounds devastating. You got him a metronome. I don't know. You, you gotta. I, I don't even know if freeze dry is gonna be that good. Because you're still so weak to Ferrothorn and Corviknight, then you can't touch him for shit. But you could be walled by uh, Gastrodon and Jellison if you don't run freeze dry. So that makes sense. He makes a good point about Jellison going up in usage too if Fish and Keld end up running the meta. That's very true. That's a good point. Dimenitan. This will be interesting, man. Nobody really has fire types, so that's true. I wonder if Kieran Black's gonna be broken. Mel Metal the Go. Yeah, Toxic Agent. I mean, Toxic Dunk Trail will be really big. Facts, facts. Yeah, now that I got Pain Split, these are good. We talked about all that. Yes, bro, this is the sleeper threat. I feel like this meta is getting worse and worse. Toxic heal, bell, aromatherapy, and knockoff and removed from most Pokemon games, and it was a wise choice. Now we're back to the same shit. Truly a loathsome meta. Let's hope for some swift bans. I understand where he's coming from just because all the defensive annoying options got back, and now offense is going to be punished quite heavily. But we do have to let the metagame develop. I don't think the metagame was very healthy, where every team was HO, and like that's the best strategy, and every team was like King's Rock Cloister. We'll see. Oh, this guy has a bunch of calcs from Melmetal. So this is this uh, Melmetal has equivalent physical bulk to 252, 144 RCS, and has barely less special. What the heck? This is so strong. 
It has just barely less power than Adamant Lander's T. Alright. Zero special attack Heatran cannot KO this thing with Magma Storm and dies to Earthquake. Superpower Okos as well. 252 special attack Timid Magma Storm has a chance to not Oko. Wow. Jolly Crit EQ fails to kill while minus one Ice Punch kills. Wow. I mean, these are pump Pokemon don't even exist, but it's just crazy to see this thing's potential. Um, nuts. Ferrothorn gets blown up. I mean, none of these mods exist, but I mean, it's cool to just see the potential it had. I think this mod would have been even better in Gen 7. Um, because Stack Attacker was good, and this is basically Stack Attacker. Oh. Yeah. I'm just scrolling through. Ooh, okay, okay. This guy created his own son. Very interesting. This is the type of son I would run. This is literally, I literally have a team that looks like this in my Gen 7 builder. But there's like a Latias on it instead of uh, Mandibus. This team looks very cool. You definitely need Ductrio. I like this one more because it has a, f a sturdy water resist and it's better versus Rotom Heat. But this team allows you to have double drought. The biggest loser of Pokemon Home is most likely Cloyster. It's so strong as that ice and rock are resisted by steel. Um, now we're getting Scarf Jirachi. I mean, that's okay. And Mel Melmetal destroys it. Dude, it's good though. Cloyster is annoying. I mean, it's a goat mon, but like you just flinch everything. It's annoying to lose to. Karen Black, this guy already made a set. Oh lord. Adamant Life Orb, Fusion Bolt, Ice Spear, Iron Head DD. Yeah, this is gonna be the one. This is gonna be the one. Three hits versus Ferrothorn is half nuts. Jeez. Iron Head smokes Clef. Other Kyurem dead. All Kyurem's getting dead. Even defensive gets murked after rocks. Might have boots though. Tyranitar gets munched by Iron Head. Jeez. It's kind of running Rock Slide. Rhetorical. And Rotom Heat. Rotom Heat could deal with you, but I would probably try to incorporate some type of Dragon move. I don't know. It's hard to find the right set. And then free shock with plus one. This is basically Z moves. Yeah, you basically the reintroduction of Z moves with the power absorber. He's completely right. This basically is the reintroduction of Z moves. Yeah, all these guys get murdered. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Um. Oh, these are some weirdos. But that's basically it, guys, for this vid. Um, I just wanted to talk about all the new mons, the new changes, what I think for OU. We're definitely going to go into a little bit more defensive, but I am very interested to see what stuff like Roost Hydreigon and, uh, you know, Kieran Black, Blastoise, Venus, or all that stuff. I'm definitely going to upload with Kieran Black, like, today, or whenever that gets introduced to the ladder, but I hope y'all enjoyed. I'll see you soon. Peace.